What's six inches long and costs six hundred and fifty dollars? The AMD R9 Nano does actually. Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Yes, it is six inches long, and yes, it does cost six hundred and fifty dollars. We are talking about the brand new, just launched today, AMD Radeon R9 Nano graphics card. Now this is a card that we have known about for a long time. We've talked about it many times. If you listen to our podcast, we know all the specifications. Uh, they've launched it, they've relaunched it, and now they're actually supposedly really, really launching it with reviews and benchmarks coming out today. Now clearly, as I hold this, you can tell that this is not your normal graphics card. It only has a six inch long PCB. The AMD Fury X actually had a seven and a half inch long PCB. So even though that was short for a flagship card, this is actually even a little bit smaller. Now what's impressive here is that this is the same almost specifications on the R9 Nano as you have on the Fury X. You have 4096 extreme processors, four gigs of HBM memory, all the associated textures, uh, texture units, ROPs, everything is the same on this card as it is on the Fury X, with the exception of clock speed. And that's really the one technical difference on this GPU that stands out from the crowd. This is rated at up to 1000 megahertz, uh, while the Fury X is rated at up to 1050. You might think, well, 50 megahertz, that's not going to make that big of a difference. And you'd be right if it actually was 50 megahertz. As it turns out, in order to maintain a 175 watt TDP, this only has 175 watt TDP compared to the Fury and Fury X that have a 275 watt TDP, AMD dynamically changes the clock speed on this GPU uh, based on the workload, the game that's playing or the, or the GP GPU workload that's going on to maintain that 175 watt TDP. TDP. So in our testing that results in clock speeds that range from uh, about 830 megahertz up to a thousand. We actually did see grid 2 at 25 by 16 or 25 by 14 rather actually hit a thousand megahertz fairly consistently. Uh, but games like Bioshock Infinite and uh, Metro Less Light for example were much lower and it's all dependent on what the GPU workload is doing uh, and, and how it can maintain that 175 watt level TDP. So that's kind of the impressive technical part of what this card is. If you look at the rest of the kind of walk around that you're used to seeing. Um, the build quality of the card is actually really nice. It's a vapor chamber cooler. Uh, it has some metal accents here. A lot of it is plastic, kind of a plastic coated feeling to it. Um, if you look at uh, power consumption requirements, it's only a single eight pin power connector, right? So that's again, part of the 175 watt TDP level there. Display connectivity is a little bit, um, I'll say disappointing here because it's three full-size display ports. That's good. One HDMI. That's good. No DVI. I know some people will miss that. And also that HDMI port is still HDMI 1.4A, not HDMI 2, which means even though this card could be the perfect home theater PC card, uh, you are limited to, you're not going to be able to do 4K60 on some of the new TVs that come out uh, that NVIDIA's Maxwell architecture can handle. AMD is promising that there will be DisplayPort to HDMI 2.0 adapters. Those are active adapters, but I haven't seen one. I don't know if it works. I don't know how much they cost. Uh, I'm going to expect them to be anywhere from $80 to $100 based on how we went from dual link or DisplayPort to dual link DVI active adapters and back and forth uh, in the last kind of display connectivity update that we went through there. Uh, so the card itself is high quality, well built. Uh, we talked about the technical kind of limitations of what you get with the Fury X. There's some other things to talk about, right? So the clock speeds are lower. Um, there is a noise concern that we have here. This card has coil wine and it has noticeable coil wine. As soon as I turned it on on our open air test bed that sits here to this case for me on a normal uh, working day, uh, I, I could tell that it was there immediately. Uh, and it's a PWM based coil wine so that it varies as the frame rate on the game actually varies. So it's different than the pump wine that, ex that existed on the Fury X because that was kind of a constant tone. And you could probably uh, tune that out a little bit easier than you could with this particular card. Now, there will be debate, as there always are with these types of things, on how important that is, right? So once you put it in a case, maybe once you move it a couple of feet of way or even put it under a desk or in another compartment, it's going to lessen the, uh, the impact of the coil wine. And once you have other fans moving, in particular the fan on the front of the R9 Nano or the fan on your processor or any other fans in the case, you're going to get more white noise that will tend to drone out that coil wine. We did some testing here um, to compare 
the uh, R9 Nano running in this system here, which is the Cooler Master Elite 110. This is a very small mini ITX based system. We actually have an MSI Z170i uh, Gaming Pro AC motherboard in here. So we got a Skylake system working. We use the R9 Nano and we also used the competing option, kind of the most comparable option on the NVIDIA side. This is the Asus GTX 970 Direct CU Mini. So this is a GTX 970 card. It also has one 8-pin power connector. It's a similar size and form factor, uh, but it is a little bit taller and a little bit longer uh, in that regard. So it's not quite uh, as, as minute as, uh, as the R9 Nano, but this is kind of the closest competitor. This case only fits, I think, cards up to 7.5 or 8.1 inches, I think. So you're kind of limited on what you can install. A full-size GTX 980 or 980 Ti, for example, is about 10 and a half inches, right? So those won't fit in these particular chassis. So we did some sound testing uh, with these two cards in this case to kind of compare was it uh, a noticeable sound difference uh, one way or the other? And we used a, a pretty high quality Zoom H6 recorder from a distance of about three feet uh, and, and did some sound recordings. I'll go, we'll play a couple of clips back here for you uh, real quick uh, and then I'll come back and discuss what I thought of them. If you listen closely, on the sample that comes from the R9 Nano, you will be able to hear the telltale buzzing of a coil whine, right? It kind of sounds like a bumblebee or something like that, uh, but it is harder to detect than I thought it would be uh, from that distance. Now, if you build this system and you set it right next to your keyboard or right next to your mouse or right next to your monitor, uh, it is going to be more noticeable. There's really no way of getting around that. And that's really my biggest disappointment in this product is that PWM coil, uh, coil whine that I wish, I wish AMD had figured out a way uh, to get around. Um, we also did uh, power measurements here. The 175 watt TDP level is actually completely accurate, right? We, we do at the GPU level monitoring, not full system uh, power consumption testing as well. Uh, so we were able to see it peak at about 175 watts. Overclocking is an, is an interesting thing with this because you are actually limited by kind of an artificial TDP level, right? This is something that is set in the driver, set in firmware, uh, where it's like, okay, don't cross 175 watts. Well, if you go to the Catalyst Control Center, your overclocking options there are you can adjust what the clock speed are, you can adjust the power limit. So if you just take that power limit and jack it all the way up to 50%, plus 50%, uh, you'll actually see power draw on this can get as high as 240, maybe 250 watts on it and clock speeds will go up accordingly as well. So because you are basically telling the graphics card, hey, don't confine yourself to 175 watts, you can go up to 50% more than that, right? So 225, 250, uh, and it will do that and the GPUs will clock, the GPU will clock up accordingly. Uh, and we are able to see, for example, Metro went from 830 to about 990 to 1000 megahertz. So pretty much, pretty much hit its top limit. Now the issue I have with that is if you're buying this card, you don't want to do that. If you're buying a card and you want to hit a 250 watt TDP or something like that, you should be buying a Fury or a Fury X or a 980 or a 980 Ti. That's not really what this card is meant for. But it's interesting, I guess, to see, in my opinion, what is AMD's first kind of implementation of a really kind of thermally limited and constrained product, right? And I think it actually, the technology works very well uh, and it did a good job of maintaining that power consumption level throughout multiple games at, at different clock speeds, which we've already talked about. Um, real quickly, I'm not gonna talk through every benchmark here, but if you go to the, the full review over at PCPro.com, you can see all the benchmarks and graphs and tables that detail all this data. The R9 Nano is an impressive performer in, in almost every way, right? If you look at it compared to the uh, AMD Fury, the non-X model, you're looking at anywhere from even performance to about 10% slower, right? The 10% limit is kind of like Bioshock Infinite at 4K, uh, but it's even in performance at GTA 5 and Battlefield 4. Interesting results there. Compared to the Fury X, that difference goes up to about 20% or so, uh, where the Fury X is about 20% faster than what you actually get out of the R9 Nano. Now you compare the R9 Nano to the Radeon R9 290X, uh, a card that had, I believe, a 250 watt TDP to it, uh, and this is gonna be 10 to 20% faster through our seven games that we tested, and that's actually a really impressive result. Using less power, um, 
and, and is able to outperform uh, that flagship card by that amount. Now, we didn't compare it to the 980, we didn't compare it to a 980 Ti, mostly because, again, if you're, com if you're considering those cards, you're in a different kind of form factor, and thus we don't really think the R9 Nano is an option for you. You shouldn't be picking this if you have room for a 10.5 or 11 inch graphics card. So for the NVIDIA comparison, we use this ASUS GTX 970 uh, ASUS DirectCU uh, Mini card here. So this is kind of uh, one of a handful of Mini ITX branded capable GeForce cards, but this is the highest performance of that. The GTX 970, I believe MSI has one and ASUS has one, but they don't really go any higher than that. There's no 980 or 980 Ti in this form factor. Um, so if we look at a form factor restricted comparison between AMD and NVIDIA, you have the R9 Nano versus the DC Mini GTX 970. You're looking at a 15 to 30, or sometimes uh, we actually hit 40% performance delta between these two cards, where the R9 Nano is significantly faster than what NVIDIA has to offer. Now, final point, I know we've been going on a long time about this, is the price. This is a $650 video card. This is like, 370, 375, something like that, right? So this is a significantly less expensive video card um, compared to that one. Uh, it is the same price as a Fury X. It's $100 more than a Fury. So there's obviously gonna be uh, complaints, concerns that are completely valid here that they, AMD is charging you more for less performance on a compared to a Fury or even maybe a Fury X. And so how do they how do they justify that? How do they think that they can get away with it? And the and the idea here is that in much the same way that Intel charges a premium for Ultrabook and ULV processors, right? Those things that can uh, provide adequate and pretty good performance at a small form factor or low thermal limit. Um, on the, C on the CPU side, AMD is hoping to do that with the GPU side with the R9 Nano. So they're really targeting people that have a specific case mod they want to build or a specific system design that they have in mind, right? You, you know you want a case this small or even maybe a little bit uh, smaller than that. There's a Lian Lee Q33 that actually only accepts cards up to 7.1 inches or something like that, right? You don't have a whole lot of options. And in fact, this may be even really close to hitting that edge as well. If you are looking for something like that, not only is this maybe the only option, but it's an extremely high performance option to get there, right? So you're getting uh, almost the same performance as a Radeon R9 Fury and close to a Fury X um, for the size and capability that you wouldn't be able to get elsewhere. Now, that being said, $650 is still a lot of money. Uh, if you are building a system and you're considering the Nano, if you're building a micro ATX or a full-size ATX, don't buy the Nano. Don't even consider it, right? If you have room for a larger card, this is not a card you should be looking for. This is more of a, uh, of a niche product for a specific set of consumers that have specific needs and wants, right? So whether or not you feel like AMD should be able to justify a $650 price point, doesn't really matter. They're going to charge it. And based on the limited availability that we've seen of the, uh, of the Fiji-based products like the Fury and Fury X, I don't think they're going to have a problem uh, selling through all of the R9 nanos that they can actually make, uh, at least in this iteration. So um, I actually really like the card. I came away impressed with the build quality of it, the compactness of it, the performance you got. Um, concerns are obviously the price and the coil wine. Uh, if they had addressed coil wine, I'd be able to give it more of a kind of a de facto recommendation for that for this type of uh, a form factor and user scenario. Uh, but overall, I still think it's a very, very good product um, that will address very specific needs to a very small group of users, I think. Uh, make sure you go to PCPro.com. We have a lot more details on benchmark graphs. We have all of our clock speed graphs and clock speed comparisons going more into the overclocking side of things, as well as more comparisons uh, to the uh, other products that we've mentioned here, Furies. 290X, GTX 970s, and so forth. Thank you guys very much for watching the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.